What's up guys, I'm Tash and this is Tash Tech. Tash Tech. Yeah, I'm gonna say it different every time just to keep you guys entertained. All right, so this is the Prusa i3 MK2, my favorite uh, printer ever. I gotta tell you, up until now, this is my favorite. My very first, I've mentioned this before, my very first printer was an i3 acrylic, and I'm so blown away by what these guys have done with this printer. I gotta tell you, it is amazing. It gets my stamp of approval as well, all right? So uh, we're gonna talk about the bearings real quick. So the, the actual mechanics and then the bearings. So the mechanics, we've got the eight millimeter smooth rod on the Z axis, the Y axis and the X axis, all with LM8A, uh, LM8UU bearings. So those are the ball bearings, you know, the linear bearings. Um, and then there's just a GT2 timing belt and we have a GT2 pulley on each. So we've got the, uh, the NEMA 17 stepper motors and it's just your, your general movement, okay? Um, the one thing, that I can say is that maybe they could have used uh, brass bushings, uh, bearings, because they are quieter, but I'm sure they do have a reason for why they've used the LM8 EU bearings. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, and then let's move on quick, because I want to keep this quick, all right? The electronics, okay, so we have a Rambo board. I've never actually used a Rambo board before. I've used Arduino with ramps and the Marlin firmware. Um, this Rambo. Uh, it doesn't have uh, stepper motor drivers, or I'm sure it's built in. It doesn't have heat sinks. It does get a little bit hot, but it doesn't seem like it's an issue. It operates. I've had no skipping at all. This Rambo board fits into the into the back here, and you'll see it's just so small. It's compact. Everything works perfectly fine. The bed heats up perfectly fine. The heater, the, the hot end, the extruder heats up perfectly fine. Uh, there's Like I said, there's no skipping. Everything fits in perfectly. Uh, the Rambo board has blown me away, and it's very cool. All right? I haven't had much touching of or fiddling around with the firmware there because I haven't had to do anything. Everything seems to be just plug and play at this point. But um, I'm sure if I get more into that, then yeah, um, it shouldn't be that difficult to modify either. It's so good. It's really good. Uh, airflow. I mean, we don't even have to talk. There's, it's got a 3D printed case here for the electronics and there's holes here for airflow, but it's sealed and it's sturdy as, as flippin' hell. The heater system, okay, the heater system is an E3D V6, an original E3D V6 with a 12 volt, uh, I'm assuming it's 12 volt 24, it might be 24 volts, uh, heater cartridge, so it's a 30 watt. Um, in the power supply, also, it's mounted on the side here, oh, it's so good, I can't, it's so sturdy, this whole printer is just, I I'll tell you a story, while it was printing, we had to get shots, and while it was printing, I picked up the printer and put it on the floor while it was busy printing and it carried on printing. I've not had to bed level anything. I built it, bed leveled it once, uh, ran the calibration with the, the, the PINDA, done. It does it itself every time now, all right? So the screen and the data input, we have an LCD, a RAMS LCD uh, screen here. The data input has got a little knob here and a cancel button. Everything perfectly works fine, okay? Uh, cable management. The one thing I saw when I was looking at it, I was like, how are you gonna put Spiral binding cables, I hate spiral binding cables, on, especially on i3s, uh, on, on the Prusa type machines, um, on the rep reps. But they, these are so sturdy because they, they've, they've put a three millimeter filament, uh, I don't know if it's PVA or PLA, I think it's PVA, three millimeter PVA filament in the, in the spiral bind that actually plugs into the hot end, the extruder block, and your electronics board that gives it, it keeps it rigid at all times. It's not falling onto your onto the, the, the prints, and this is on the bed, and the, and the, 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 uh, the extruder here, the, the, the carriage. Very, very good cable management. And again, I need to go back to the simplicity of this machine. It is so simple, yet it works. And that's the thing we always need, is we need simplicity, and we need it to work. We don't need to over-engineer anything, and that's what they've done here. They've, they've, they've looked and they go, oh, we don't need this, we don't need this. What do we need? We need this, X, Y, and Z. We put X, Y, and Z as simple as we can, and it's worked. The frame, okay, so it's a metal frame. We've got the actual top frame here and then the bottom part is the threaded rods. Okay, so it's held together by threaded rods. Again, I mean, I would, I personally don't like the threaded rods, but they work so well that they've actually looked at it and go, okay, what are the issues with the threaded rods? Let's fix the, let's fix the issues instead of re-engineering the whole thing. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's what they've done here. So they've, they've, they've like coated it, they powder coated these rods and it gives it a lot more stability, if I can put it that way. Um, because your your nuts are not always twisting and everything is strong. It's very strong I mean when you align it, it's aligned and that's it. It stays. I've been printing 
non-stop since we got it. It's been three days now I've been printing with it because um, I wanted to do this video really quick. And we have not had any issues with the frame, the, the actual twisting of, the vit of, of it or anything else. Okay, what's next? The extruder and the hot end. Okay, so the extruder is something that they've made up themselves. I'm assuming I haven't seen nothing of this anything. And it's uh, and then we've got the hot end, which is the E3D V6, goes right in there. Your cooling fan is here, which is separately controlled on the Rambo board, so it only turns on when it needs to. Which brings me to the other point, which we, which we'll just kind of touch on, is the sound. It is very quiet. It is one of the most quiet printers I've ever I've ever worked on. It controls the fans automatically uh, as and when it needs to for temperature purposes. And we've got the cooling fan in the front here. This little fan duct actually is not the whole thing. It just blows the fan, the air flow right, right at the nozzle, which is good. So at the bottom of the nozzle. Um, and that, that actually improves the print quality drastically. All right, because we're not blowing air everywhere. We're just blowing it right where it needs to be. Okay, um, the extruder hasn't jammed anything on me uh, yet, touch wood. Uh, I don't think it will because it's been engineered to perfection. Um, it's so robust. I mean, the stepper motor on there is an EMA 17 as well. Uh, the type of filament, we've only done PV PLA because I've been constrained for time. But we, I mean, I've tried a bit of ABS and it works as well. So PLA ABS definitely. We've been told it can do PEEK, uh, PETG, PVA as well. And a few other, you know, uh, foreign, uh, not foreign, uh, <laughs> filaments that we can say. Um, you know, your, your, your carbon fiber. I'm not even sure we can do carbon, but we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, and the bed. The bed is the most important part. This is what I've been waiting for, the bed. The bed in itself is a feat of engineering unlike ever seen before, all right? It's, it's got different temperature zones, which you'll see on thermal imaging, that, in, that ensures that your print bed is, con is consistently heated throughout the whole thing, which is amazing. Um, it also has these built-in... Uh, calibration points that the PIND goes and probes on and then it, it actually it doesn't really look at the level of the bed it does a, um, a tilt what's the word a a complete calibration for the curvature of the bed as well so it, uh, and you can see this because it actually tells you on the screen now when you when I so that's the bed and like I said because we've got consistent heat on there and we've got that PIND probe getting a perfect first layer every single time but in order to get that, there's something very, very cool that this printer did. It has a live Z-axis adjustment. So when you, when you built it, which, which when I built it, it was like some of the best hours of my life building this printer because it, everything was laid out so perfectly in the instruction manual and was online. And um, it was just such a pleasure to build. I mean, such a pleasure. Everything was there and everything worked as well. It's not like, ah, this is not going to work. Uh, it will work for now, but I'm going to change it later. Everything on here is perfection utter perfection to the from the cable ties you look at the cable ties holding in the the smooth rods and you go why the hell are we, you don't the thing is it's there and it works why do you need to change it uh, if you look at um the fact that there's no uh bearing at the top of the the lead screw it, the lead screw is so strong it does it doesn't need one everything has been engineered to perfection on this machine and there's not there's nothing more i can say about the build the quality of it it's just it speaks for itself it speaks volumes but what I, would, what I do want to tell you, what I, I want to talk to you guys about is the, uh, the actual calibration of it. So when you build it, it'll tell you on the screen, the first time you turn it on, calibration has not been done. So you have to do a calibration. So on the SD card that it comes with, it has a, a calibration, a print, and it'll start printing. And then you go to your Z Live Access, and Joe explains all of this in a video on YouTube. So you can watch this video and he walks you through it. It's so good. So then you set your, you start adjusting your, your live Z height until you get that perfect first layer. And once you've got that perfect first layer, while it's busy printing, you leave it. So that is your offset between your PINDA and your, which is the, the, the test probe and your, your, your hot end nozzle tip. That's it. Every time you then print, if you're using S3D, they've got profiles for everything. I'm using S3D. It automatically does that bed level when you when you slice it, and it and it's it's a perfect first layer every single time. And uh, there's just not much more to say about this printer. I mean, in terms of thermal imaging, you'll see the thermal imaging. The whole printer itself is perfectly aligned in terms of airflow. Um, 
you know, we, we've printed a couple of things. Uh, this was one of the, the prints that come on the SD card. It's Castle. It took 14 hours. Um, I think they just, it just, just sliced. I didn't slice it. It was just sliced by default on the card. And it's perfect. I mean, we, we've done a time lapse on this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So you guys can check out the time lapse on my channel. And this was the second print I did. <laughs> I love this fractal pyramid. It really tests the shit out of any printer. And this printer performed amazingly. Um, this filament as well is so cool. I like the filament. It's a bit of an off purple. Uh, there, this took 30 hours. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But I, I printed it very slow as well. Uh, then I printed this guy. I printed um, low poly squirtle. But I printed it hollow with one shell. And we did have a few issues, but it's one, it's one outer wall. You know, you're going to get that. I don't know if you want to hold it up to the camera there. Yeah, there's a few failure points. Then I printed uh, Adelinda, Adelinda, which is the dragon. Uh, I had a few issues here on... It looks like the tail. But this is my this is my fault. I think I tensioned those belts a little bit too, 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 too tight. I'm going to have to loosen that. All right. Again, perfect. I mean... Uh, and then the, I printed this last. And this also was uh, no info. And, you know, we had a little bit of an issue on here. But it printed perfectly. Because i got to tell you, I mean... It is so nice to own a printer that, like they say, punches way above its price line. Because what you pay for this printer is not what you get. You get a premium printer. You get something that's literally plug and play. Push print and walk away forget about it. That's all, you, that's all you have to do with this one. And I'm very impressed. Guys, Joe, well done. Well done. Hats off to you. Thanks, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Here's some more footage at the end of this. If you guys want to watch, maybe some thermal imaging. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we can splice in. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I like to do these videos. And uh, the only way I can continue to do these videos is if you guys continue to watch and leave your comments and talk to me. I'm on the 3D printing groups. Uh, I have an Instagram, which is at Angry Tash. <laughs> I have an Instagram. I sound like your grandfather. Um, I have an Instagram, so check me out. I also have a Facebook page. Uh, I also on LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys look at maybe Snapchat as well. What others are there? I don't know. Uh, there's, uh, there's. Uh, I might be on Tinder. I don't know. All right, Tinder social app. No, I don't know. If you guys want me on Tinder, I'll be on Tinder. All right. <laughs> she says no. She says, oh, I can't. I'm already taken. But uh, I, I will receive those. Uh, no, I won't. I won't. Okay. Oh no, nothing. All right. <laughs> Okay, okay. Apparently, I'm looking for a second wife. If anyone's interested and you have lots of money, okay, <laughs> can buy me printers every day. Okay, hit me up. Thanks for watching, guys.